Name? Captain Defense, sir. Colonel Dupuy is expecting you. Cap the second in command of French intelligence? Yes, Captain. Defense is here. Ah, yes, Captain Defense. I have just been reading your report. Our agents in Germany confirmed there was a gigantic plane at the base of Dalhorn which was destroyed in some mysterious fire. Due to you, Defense? Yes, sir, but that was actually an accident, sir. So our agents report. Also, you failed to persuade Monsieur Fokker to come over to us. Yes, sir. So, what am I to do with you, Defense? Um, I don't know, sir. The Prime Minister needs an agent for a difficult mission of the highest secrecy. It will have to be you. Command headquarters is expecting you. Report that immediately. Yes, sir. Oh, Defense. Don't fail this time. Yes, sir. That's the trick cyclist we passed on the way in. We thought he was an errand boy. That's Captain Aaron Boy to you, Second Lieutenant. And unless you're dressed for a masquerade, I fully expect to be saluted. Captain, really? No, no, he's quite right. You clearly have no idea who these gentlemen are. Two officers of junior rank. The brothers, Prince Sixtus and Prince Xavier of Bourbon Parma. You see, Captain, our sister is the Empress Sita of Austria. Her husband, Emperor Karl, wishes to negotiate a peace settlement separate from Germany. My God, Germany would lose its major ally. It would pull the rug right out from under the Kaiser. What would my part be in this? You are to escort Lieutenant Sixtus and Xavier into Vienna. There they will meet secretly with Emperor Karl and try to secure in writing certain concessions demanded by my government. You will then get the brothers safely back to France. If we succeed, we can put an end to this war with the stroke of a pen. Without another shot being fired or another life lost. Interested. Papers, they are expert forgeries and should see you safely into Austria. And once you have crossed the border, you will be contacted by one of our operatives 
and given further instructions. Operative? Schultz. How will I find this Schultz? Schultz will find you. You know, the skiing in Gestart is extraordinary at this time of year. Do you remember that time the Duke and Duchess of Rochester arrived with their entire retinue in town? Never had the misfortune to run into those. Let's get one thing straight. We're not here on holiday. This is damn serious business. I don't think we need you to tell us that. I think you do. Look at you, dressed like a couple of Parisian dandies off of the gaming tables. You don't like us much, do you, Captain? I don't care for the frivolous. In this line of work, it can get you killed. If we go into Austria with you prattling on about Gustav this and the Duke and Duchess of that, they'll be on to us in no time. Who? German spies? German spies don't concern me so much. All they do is shoot us. It's the Austrian secret police that worries me more. And what would they do? Poke our eyes out, strip our flesh, feed us our innards, for starters. You may view us as frivolous, Captain. But our commitment to ending this horror is not. Yeah, well, I've seen the horror. Flanders, Verdun, the Congo. How much horror have you glimpsed from the Paris nightclubs? Those uniforms that we wear aren't just for show, Captain. My brother and I serve as stretcher bearers, carrying the wounded off the front lines. Our sister is equally concerned. Sixtus, show him the letter. Think of all those unfortunate souls living in the hell of the trenches, dying every day by the thousands, and come with all haste. I like your sister already. How dare you! Just how far do you think we'd get if they searched you at the border and found this? Don't act suspiciously. We'll have to leave the train. Then we'll pass the checkpoint separately. Then we'll meet up on the other side. Let's go. Keep low profile. And remember, we don't know each other. This will be dead. Sergeant. Are these your papers, mein Herr? Of course they're my papers. Now, if you would let me pass. Nothing we 
could have done. Our lives would have been forfeited and our mission would have amounted to nothing. Oh, God. My poor brother. Whatever shall I tell our sister? Whatever shall I tell our parents? Tell them that he sacrificed himself for the noblest of causes. On the other hand, you could say that those stupid fools at the border mistook me for somebody else. Sixty! <laughs> oh, we thought you were a goner for sure. I would have been if it hadn't been for you. Thank God you burnt that letter. What kind of questions did they ask? Nothing important. Like I said, they thought I was somebody else. <laughs> What are you thinking? Why arrest us at the border? Why not shadow us into Vienna and smash the entire spy network? But surely, if someone were telling us, we'd have noticed it by now. Good Narben. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I have to take your tickets for now. Why would he take our tickets? Excuse me, is there some problem with our tickets? It seems you assigned the wrong um, compartment. It's no problem. There's no one else to it there today. So, feel free to stay. Thank you. confusion about being in the wrong compartment. I handled it. Contact with Schultz. Or rather, he makes contact with us. I wonder what this Schultz looks like. You can tell. I'm sure he's a master of disguise. I'm sure. You're right. He is a master of disguise. This is no time for jokes. There's danger. Follow me. The three gentlemen who entered Austria by train no longer exist. Now there are only three young Austrian soldiers on leave. That's more like it, Sixtus. I always thought we should be captains. No, oh, Lieutenant, unless you're dressed for a masquerade, we fully expect to be saluted. Don't press your royal luck. 
Take the car to Vienna. Here's the address. Tell them that you are friends of Frederick. He will take you from there. Thank you, Frau Schulz. One more thing. You will need this for the drive. Isn't that where we're supposed to go? That's the place. I can see the address from here. What happened? A terrible shootout. Terrible. I'm told the secret police broke up Ring of Spies. Oh! Oh! I better do what the policeman says. Now you stop. Drive, you idiot. We don't know you, friend. We're not going anywhere. You are drawing attention. Now drive. You are friends of Frederick, yeah? I think you've mistaken us for someone else. Trust me. They call me Mr. Max. Turn left. Whatever you say, but we still don't know any Frederick. No? Then why were you going to that house? Three nice Austrian soldier boys like you. Nothing better to do on your fellow than visit a nest of spies? Huh. Turn right. Hmm. These are yummy. Yeah, I have to. How soon can you be here? I don't trust this Mr. Max. He seems to know all about us. He could be working with Frederick. He could also be secret police. They could have beaten that information out of Frederick when they arrested him. Coffee to your liking? It's fine. Good. Now what? Frederick is dead, in case you are wondering. Sorry to hear that. These men will see to you. I do hope it is over quickly. Missed the turn. Schönbrunn Palace is back that way. Hey, we're going the wrong way. I've got a bad feeling about.
thought you'd never make it. We're not the only ones. <laughs> How long has it been? Three years. Oh, it's more like four. <laughs> and who is this third man? This is Captain Henri de Fons, our spy. He got us into Vienna. If not for him, Lord knows what would have become of us. Well done, Captain. We're most grateful. Summon Count Janine immediately. Tell him the package has arrived. So you see, Count Chernin, the French and British governments are most anxious to declare peace with Austria. But only if Karl is willing to grant three key concessions in writing. And those are? Number one, Austria must agree to support the French claim to the region of Alsace-Lorraine. Go on. Two, Austria must recognize Belgian sovereignty and agree to the evacuation of all German troops from Belgian territory. Mm -hmm. Three, we must restore Serbian sovereignty and grant them the economic concessions they seek. These demands are somewhat problematic. But not altogether unjustified. Oh, I agree. But there are many in the Empire who would not. If I may speak frankly, there are those who would view these concessions as a betrayal. Perhaps even treasonous. Who would dare? The Kaiser, for one. Your Imperial Majesty knows that I have no wish to anger you. I was foreign minister to your great uncle, the Emperor Franz Josef, for many years, and I hope to be yours for many years to come. But we are not just talking about peace with France. We are also talking about an end to our alliance with Germany, and this is not a matter to be taken lightly. The Kaiser can be a powerful enemy, as England and France have already learned. I understand that, Count. But all that must be weighed against the realities of this war. Of course, we could go on until one side crushes the other completely. But at what cost? Diplomacy demands. It's the failure of diplomacy that's got us into this mess. Your Imperial Majesty has strong views. But she's right, isn't she? Look at Russia, my God, a revolution. The Tsar deposed by his own people. And why? Because they are weary of war. They are angry and dissatisfied. If we want to stop the same thing happening in Austria, we have to liberalize the monarchy and give the people what they want, peace, whatever the cost. I'm not merely being noble. It's not just the men in the trenches I want to save. I don't want to go down in history as the last emperor of Austria. The one who let a thousand year monarchy crumble through his fingers like dust. Very well. I will draft a letter. Will tomorrow be soon enough? As soon as you can, Count. Thank you. nonsense right now. If you made an effort to share your toys instead of fighting over them, nobody would have broken it and you could have both played. Instead, each of you ends up with nothing. Am I right? Yes, Mum. Yes, Mum. It's a bad nations don't have grown-ups to settle their disputes. 
I haven't slept well for the last four months since I've been emperor. It's quite a responsibility. It's not what I expected. When Zita and I married, we planned for a quiet, uneventful life at the royal court. There's Count Chernin. Come on, everybody, let's race to the house. Shame, really. I would have enjoyed a quiet, uneventful life. But this isn't what we talked about at all. We spoke of guarantees, not platitudes and maybes. There is a language to diplomacy which must be observed. To hell with your language, and to hell with your diplomacy. Now, 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 calm down. There's nothing to be gained by any of this. Count Janine, forgive my brother-in-law's rashness. Although I must admit, this letter, well, is a little bit more vague than I had hoped. As it must be. But why? One cannot start a negotiation by giving away the farm and all the livestock, can one? More importantly, if the Kaiser discovers what we are doing, we must have a fallback position. Fallback position? Is that all you diplomats care about? Millions of people are dying, Chernin. And all you're concerned about is covering your own flank. Young man, I'm less concerned with covering my flank than covering the Emperor's. Your Imperial Majesty, I advise caution. I have been as explicit in this letter as I felt it was wise to be. And now, it is up to you as to whether or not you wish to sign it. Shakespeare said, first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. He was wrong. We should start with the bloody diplomats. Your Imperial Majesty has made a wise decision. Have I? Straight to this address. Mr. Max is waiting for you with new papers and civilian clothes for a return trip. Doc! You have Count Janine's letter in a safe place. Bye, Count. As for you, Captain, we can never forget all you have done for us. Our brothers are precious. I know you'll look after them. is worthless. I have a feeling this one isn't. To the 
British, Belgian, and French governments, I, His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Karl of Austria-Hungary, do hereby sue for peace, in return for which I'm willing to grant the following concessions. <gasps> yeah! Mr. Max? Hello? No light. Maybe he didn't pay his bill. behind them. We came around a the corner. They were gone. Vanished.
the sewer was a really wonderful idea. <laughs> what an incredible new smell you've discovered. How's the letter? A bit damp, but it's still intact. A bit like us. How are we going to get across the border in these uniforms? We're supposed to get new papers, civilian clothes. I'll think of something. train out of Austria, especially trains to Switzerland. Austrian soldiers. Deserters. Seen them? German diplomatic immunity. These will get you across the border, no problem. What about you? Don't worry about me. Just get this letter back to France. Go.
Put us down. Reverse the train. Unfortunately, the Kaiser got wind of what the Emperor was up to and hauled him over the carpet. Gave him a real dressing down. So the whole thing has collapsed, no separate peace, and the war is still on. Another failure, Defense? Yes, sir. Defense, what am I going to do with you? Let's consider your future over a drink. What do you know about Russia? I know they just had a revolution there. I know the Tsar was overthrown. I would imagine it's fairly chaotic. To say the least. The new government of Alexander Kerensky is trying to establish democracy. But more important, they're determined to keep Russia in the war. You mean there was a possibility they would pull out? There's every chance. If the Kerensky government falls, Think what that would do to the German war effort. Well, yes, sir. They could take their troops from Russia and put them on the Western Front. How good is your Russian? That's good enough, sir. Excellent. Our embassy needs a translator. Would I get to work in the field? That you will have to wait till you get to Petrograd. Good luck, Defense. Thank you, sir. Agitators have been stirring up the machine gun regiment again. Hmm. Something's going on, Captain Defense. I think the Bolsheviks are starting to make their move, sir. I've had lots of reports of... You're way off, Brossard. The Bolsheviks talk big, but they're still small potatoes. Defense. Lenin is promising to pull Russia out of the war if he comes to power. Have you any idea how that sounds to soldiers who've been stuck in a waterlogged trench for years? You don't have to tell me about the trenches, Brossard. I've been there. I know what kind of hell that is. But that doesn't mean that Lenin's going to take over Russia. My analysis suggests... Sir, can Brossard get on with his analysis on his own? I'd rather be on the field collecting the facts instead of arguing with him about what they mean. The facts are no use without analysis, Captain. Your Russian is excellent. You decode well. I need you here. You think so much of yourself, Defense. Why should he send you out in the field instead of me? Because I'm a natural field agent, Brossard. And you're a natural desk clerk. The only way you'd be any use in the field would be if they made you into a scarecrow. Hey, when did this come in? Hey, hold the fort for me, would you? I have to go out for half an hour. Hey, hey, hey I don't have time to do your work, Defense. There's a whole load of... Thanks, Captain. I could rely on you. in 
do you look like you've seen a ghost? You're going to the Troy Palace, right? I'm speaking there. I'm telling them what it's like in the trenches. Yeah, I mean, someone's got to tell them. We've got to stop this war. Don't go, Sergei. Why not? Stay away from the Troy Palace today. Why? Because he's a deserter. So? It's going to be a dangerous place for deserters, OK? How do you know? You know I can't tell you that. Just trust me. Hey, are we friends? Yes, we're friends. Then you promise. All right. I promise. Good. I've got to get back to work. So, see you tonight at the bear pit? from a meeting with Kerensky and members of the provisional government and have to tell you in the strictest confidence that I seriously doubt whether they can hold on to power until the elections. Things have grown more and more volatile ever since Lenin returned from exile. The next three months are crucial. I believe there could be an insurrection any time in the next two weeks. The provisional government is desperate for any information. I expect you all to work with the utmost diligence. Remember, if the Bolsheviks come to power and Russia pulls out of the war, millions of German troops will be free to come to the battlefields of France and overrun us. I might add that there will probably be a promotion in this for whoever provides the information we need or a more attractive assignment. Hi, Indy. Come and have some tea. They just felt the samovar. Thank you so much for learning with this. I admire Mr. H. T. Well so much. One government for the whole world? I love the time machine and the invisible man, but I'm sure I agree with his politics. Why not? The system we've got now is working so well. Mm. Look, Professor, H.G. Wells, Bernard Shaw, our own Maxime Gorky. All these writers think they know how to create a paradise on Earth like they can in their books. It's not possible. Anything's possible now. The sun has gone. We decide what happens next. No, we don't. God decides. Paradise is in heaven, not on Earth. Trying to create paradise here is just going to cause endless suffering. So, how are things at the hospital, Rosa? Well, we had two more children die today because there's no sulfur. It's all gone to the front. The war is ruining us, like it's ruining everything else in Russia. You're beginning to sound like a Bolshevik, Rosa. You don't have to be a Bolshevik to be against the war. Everyone hates the war. And as soon as the provisional government holds the elections, it'll be over. If the provisional government gets to hold the elections... Of course they will. Who's going to stop them? If ever there was a time of hope, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Comrade Spy, we spent a very busy but very uneventful afternoon folding leaflets, <laughs> and my brilliant speech went unheard. I hope you are satisfied. You made the right choice, my friend. Maybe this will make up for your disappointment. <laughs> wow, butter. I haven't seen that for weeks. Brad, yes. spy, I love you. Well, the oh French ambassador God. knew he was supporting a gang of revolutionaries. He'd have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, the next time we'll get those bastards. Hey, Boris, what's happened? Mm. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, my God. Look, I got a bottle of vodka. How long is it since we last saw vodka? Huh? Last night. <laughs> Oh, Boris, so what happened this time? Ah, what happened? Ah, what happened was I was waiting for you to make your damn speech outside the Turin Palace. Suddenly, soldiers appear and start rounding up deserters to send them back to the front. I'm telling you, there was blood everywhere. How do you spies know all these things? Come on, Irene, we have an agreement, don't we? You don't ask me what goes on at the French Embassy. I don't ask you what goes on at Bolshevik headquarters. But why did you get into fight with them, Boris? You're not a deserter. Eh? Oh, I didn't get this fighting. I got this still in the vodka damn shop with them. <laughs> and stop <laughs> wasting it. This is for a party. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, 
Putting in a little extra time, Captain. Ambassador's not gonna mess tonight. Well, that's perfect, just what we need. You should speak to him. It's no good staring at him like a little sheep. But truly, he realizes he must. Rosa. One thing in life you have to understand men are really stupid. Except when they're enlightened revolutionaries. Oh, especially if they are enlightened revolutionaries. Let me have a chunk now. No, it's not for now. We have to save it. Save it? I'm hungry. Sergei, come on. <clears throat> You started without me. Yeah, it's really buzzing out there, you know. I haven't seen people this worked up since we threw out the zone. One of the priests at the seminary said he's heard that the Bolsheviks are going to stage a coup within the next ten days. Really? Know anything about that, Sergei? Hey, comrade spy. Remember our deal? I just don't think I can go through with this. You can do it, Rosa. You can distract his attention. Check me. Just keep him away from the apartment until nine o'clock. I'll try. Hi, ladies. Conspiring? You men are so suspicious. No, I have to write an essay on Charles Dickens tonight. Then the leaflet on land seizure for my boss at the Bolshevik headquarters. Indy, there's a Mozart recital on at the conservatoire this evening. They're playing the concerto for clarinet now. Clarinet wondering. concerto? Rosie, you know the way right to my heart. Do you want to come? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be lovely. It's been cancelled. They've been sent to the front to entertain the troops. Yeah. This is terrible. Are you all right? Oh, uh, just feeling a little weak. Maybe I should take you home. You probably just need no, to no, rest. No, no, I just need to get some fresh air. It's a little faintness, that's all. It'll go away. You sure you're all right? Let's just walk. I want to show you something. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it's wonderful. Rosie, you're trembling. 
I think I should take you back. I really think... No, please, it's just a little chill. The most lovely charm of St. Petersburg, I think, is that there's every kind of bridge one can imagine. Those griffins remind me of my dog. Do you miss your home? I miss hot dogs, and root beer floats, and baseball. Not your family? Well, my mom died a few years ago. I'm sorry. Well, my dad would probably kill me if I ever went home. Are you all right? I'm just tired. I didn't get much sleep last night. Were you working? Mm. I'm sorry. Maybe we should start back towards the apartment. Let's go back this way. Are you sure? It seems like the wrong direction. If we go this way, we'll get to cross a bridge with the most wonderful cast iron railings. Are you mad at me? No, of course not. It's truly magical. I'm glad. It's the perfect birthday present. It's your birthday? Why didn't you say something? It's no big deal. It's the perfect way to spend it. I think so, too. This way. Hey, we're right back where we started. I guess it took us in a circle. I'm sorry. Indy! Rosa! What an amazing coincidence! Tell me, how was the concert? It's been cancelled. I've been showing Indy the bridges of St. Petersburg for the last hour and a half. Ah, well, you're a very lucky man. The bridges of St. Petersburg are so exciting. Come along, old friend. Let's get you home, huh? I was thinking about that, too. Hey, Dimitri! What a surprise! Fancy food work. Come and cut your cake. We're all hungry. Cake. <laughs> a revolutionary cake. More ingenuity than raisin. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? We get a cake and who gets to divide it up? The capitalist. Oh. He's not cutting the cake oh. because he's a capitalist. He's cutting it because it's his birthday. That's how things used to be, Dmitri. Everything used to depend on birth. Yes. If you were born a noble, you got that much. Mm. No, if you were born a peasant... Or a worker. You got that much. <laughs> That's feudalism for you. The tar is gone, we're through with it. Whereas if you wisely decide to become capitalist, oh, then yeah. the guy that bakes the cake gets the nice big slice because he's smart no. and ingenious. But the workers who actually did the mixing get the little teeny bits. Mm. So the way to achieve justice is... Through socialism, where the smart capitalist can bake the cake, but the government, in this case me, makes sure he gives the workers an absolutely fair share of it. Mm. <laughs> Word work, Rosa. The capitalists are too smart for that. Uh, <laughs> if you try getting the cake away from them, it falls into pieces. <laughs> no. The people must bake the cake and the state must divide it up equally so everyone gets a fair share according to what he needs. And that's what communism is all about. And this is anarchism in practice. <laughs> Because it's your birthday. Now, this is where, if we were rich, we would give our friend a sumptuous present. <laughs> but because we are not rich, and in fact we don't have any money at all, we'll give him something much better. 
will take him to see history being made. So started it are satisfied before they have enough profit from building the tanks, the guns, the shells. How many? 50,000, a million, two million. I say none. I say stop the war now. <laughs> Our demands are simple. We want peace for the soldier. We want bread for our workers. We want land for our peasants. No! <laughs> but that is only the beginning. When we come to power, we will utterly change this nation into something the world has never seen before. Under communism, Russia will be governed by the people. In one great armed militia, ordinary people running their everyday affairs themselves. <laughs> the dictatorship of the proletariat. <laughs> this will develop into a society so perfect that the state itself will wither away. What? Do Kerensky and the provisional government offer instead capitalism with lighter chains for the workers? <laughs> there can be no compromise with these frauds. Peace, bread, land. Keep on saying it until all Russia rises up to demand it, and then, then. We will lead the proletariat to victory! Well, indeed. Happy birthday. Yes, thanks. <laughs> He's wrong. They're pulling back on the front. Now is the time. No, it's not. Timing is everything. Get it wrong now and it all goes up in smoke. Thank you. You must be very tired. No, actually, I still have some things I have to do. At this hour? I'm afraid so. I'll see you in the morning. Back at the apartment? Bye. and peasants, the moment has come for the people to strike without mercy 
and bring Kerensky and his henchmen down into the dust of history. We will gather at and march on the Toride Palace at. Damn it! No dates. I told you there was nobody here. Captain, how nice of you to drop in. Do you never go home? A few love steelworks, huh? Is that your best deduction so far? It's only the key to the whole thing. Come on, the P love steelworks is just another big industrial plant. Doesn't mean anything. Defense. It's only the biggest concentration of industrial workers in St. Petersburg. 30,000 of them. When those people are ready to attack the government, the Bolsheviks will strike. Huh. I remember that. been waiting here for me? Why? Because... Because I love you. Wow. I shouldn't be saying this, should I? I'm embarrassing you. No, no, no. It, it's just... When I'm with you, I feel alive. And when you're gone, it's as if someone has just shut me in a tomb. Rosa. It's all right, Indy. You don't need to say anything. I got it wrong, didn't I? Rosa, I like you so much. You're smart and funny and pretty. But love is a weird thing. It's kind of like lightning. And you can no more make it strike than you can't stop it if it decides to hit you. And you haven't been struck. I sometimes envy Sergei and Irina. They've got it all planned out. As soon as the revolution is over, they're going to move out into the country. Yeah, I know. Sergei's going to build a log cabin by a stream and catch fish. They're going to raise a family there. <laughs> I sometimes think when they're standing up there telling the steel workers to storm the barricades, all they really think about is that little cabin in the country. The steel workers? Any workers. I just say this because they're going to talk to some steel workers this morning. Which steel workers? Did they say which steel plant they were going to? I don't know, Indy. What does it matter? Hi. 
Are we interrupting something? Sergei, you're so dumb sometimes. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Good luck at the Pudilov works. What makes you think we're going there? You'd have to whip up the Pudilov workers if the revolution was starting tomorrow, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? I've been reading the literature, Irina. All the leaflets about the rallies and the meetings and the marches. I know they're happening all the time, but there's more of them happening in the next 48 hours than there have been for weeks. I know the Pudilov Steelworks is the key. And now I know you're on your way to stir up the workers. So don't tell me the Bolshevik revolution isn't starting, Sergei. You have to find this out to tell your bosses, haven't you, Indy? That's okay. I understand. Everybody has a job to do. Well, let me do you a favor. Don't tell them the Bolsheviks are making their move now, because they aren't. Well, you would say... The first thing is that we are not going to the Putilov Steelworks. We are going to a Steelworks, but not that one. That doesn't matter. But I'm going to tell you something that does. Indy, where do you think Lenin is? As of last night, he was at Bolshevik headquarters. He's where... on his way to Finland. Finland? The man is exhausted. He's worn out. He's going to recuperate. Now, ask yourself this. Have you ever heard of a revolution starting when the leader was on holiday? That is not the only reason why the Bolsheviks are not making the move now. It's much more basic than that. Russia isn't ready. Lenin knows we could take St. Petersburg right now. And hold it for about a week, not more, before we got thrown out. The simple fact is that not enough people support us yet. Not enough soldiers, not enough workers, not enough peasants. We'd be wiped out. In a few months' time, we'll have persuaded them. But not yet. Uh, anyway, if you go and tell your bosses the Bolshevik revolution is coming anytime soon, you'll end up with egg on your face. I promise you. Believe me, Indy, this is not the time. Friendship isn't easy either. Is it, Indy? Gentlemen, I need results now. It's not just the Russian government, but my superiors in Paris. They are demanding a report today. Your assessments. Sir, I believe the Bolshevik uprising will begin in the next 24 hours, Ambassador. Really? What's your proof, Captain Brossard? Proof one, sir. The latest offensive against the Germans is failing, and more and more soldiers are deserting from the front. What does that mean? Proof two. Regiments stationed in St. Petersburg itself are refusing to go to the front and are thus available for insurrection here. The most dangerous are the machine gun regiment and the Kronstadt sailors. However, if you take Proof it... three. In the next 48 hours, there are more rallies and protest meetings scheduled than at any time since the Tsar fell. I believe they will culminate in a march on the Torite Palace, probably on the evening of the 5th. Cogent reasoning, Brossard. Henri, what is your view? Well, <laughs> if the Bolshevik storms the palace now, there'd be precious little to stop them. Except the fact that the timing is entirely wrong. Wrong, Captain Deffens. Why wrong? Because the Bolsheviks don't have the support in the country or the army yet. They know that they could capture St. Petersburg, but they also know that they couldn't hold it. Yes, there is a lot of truth in that, Ambassador. The Bolsheviks are dangerous, but they are also cautious. Furthermore, I've been among the Bolshevik activists, those who'd know if anything's going on. And they know nothing. It's Bolshevik practice to keep ordinary members in the dark. Everything Lenid said has been firing them up too. Brossard may be totally wrong in most of his analysis, but he is right to mention Lenin. If you want to know what's going on in this revolution, follow Lenin. Well, Natalia, we do follow Lenin. We have agents whose sole task that is. Then, if you check with them, Ambassador, I think you'll find that as of last night, He's on holiday in Finland. Hardly the right place from which to mount a coup d'etat in St. Petersburg. Monsieur Laurentine, do we have those reports? They just arrived, sir. Captain Defense is quite correct. Lenin crossed the Finnish border this morning, and he's reported to be suffering from extreme nervous exhaustion. Ah, really? Well done, Defense. Good intelligence work. You may have a future out in the field. Interesting thinking, Brossard. But perhaps 
you let your enthusiasm run away with you. Thank you, gentlemen. I studied the documents, but I'm pleased to say it looks as though the second Russian revolution is not upon us yet. Okay, I think that's it for today. I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm not gonna be doing this for much longer. You're a good desk man, Brossard, but I need to be out in the real world. Is that so, Captain? You see, I like doing things, not reading about them. And, well, I believe it's going to pay off. I'll think of you slaving away down here while I'm out tracking the enemy through the streets of some exotic city. Uh, good. It's nice to know someone cares about you. Captain Defense, Captain Brossard, report at once to the crisis room above the ambassador's office. Crisis room? I didn't even know we had it. just opened one. The Bolshevik uprising began an hour ago. Ah, out of your fine room, Captain. Not for long, I fear. I'd like you to man one of the poles, right here. Defense. Rossard, over here with me. The machine gun regiment has taken over the Finland station, Ambassador. They're going around all the army units stationed in the city, urging them to join them in overthrowing the government. Mark it on the map, man. Mark it on the map. I want to see what is going on. At the corner of where? Spalanaya. Nevsky Prospect. There are Bolshevik armored cars at the corner of Spalanaya Street and the Nevsky Prospect. There are Bolshevik armored cars at all the major intersections, Captain. Thank you. I think your phone is ringing again. They have blocked all the bridges over the Nev, sir. Lenin has returned from Finland. People love steel works. He's gone straight to Bolshevik headquarters and is addressing a massive crowd. The Kronstadt sailors are heading for the capital ambassador. 10,000 of them. Trotsky is addressing a giant crowd outside the Torite Palace. Persuading them to march on the capital, right? Right. Any names? Sergei. Elise. France will never recognize the Russia run by the Soviets. In speech to the Kronstadt sailors as he just came in. And I know what it says. All power to the Soviets, forward to the Torrite Palace. Well, not exactly, sir. Comrades, you must excuse me, I have been ill. In spite of temporary difficulties, I am certain we will be victorious. Though this demands from us restraint, determination, and constant alertness. Not exactly fighting talk. And we also know now what Trotsky was telling the crowds at the Torite Palace. Which was? Go home. Go home? The time is not right for insurrection. Disperse until you are called on. Good Lord! Perhaps Lenin really was on holiday. Perhaps it wasn't a ruse. Uh, are people listening to these instructions? They just... No, no sir. The Bolshevik leaders are trying to restrain the people, but nobody is taking any notice. I'm beginning to like this. It has a smell of disaster about it. The Cossacks are out, sir. They've decided to back the government. There's snipers on the rooftops firing on the marchers. That, Captain, is the sort of news I like to hear. You know what's happened, don't you? Our revolutionary friend Lenin has overexcited the people. They've listened to one speech too many and taken the initiative themselves. By tomorrow morning, the streets of St. Petersburg will be running with blood. And all of it red. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go on fighting this war? Yeah. Who wants a pack of fat bourgeois running this country? Yeah. So let's go and throw them out, every last one of them.
trying to stop you from getting killed. Don't go. We're not pulling out now. I've come here to tell you that if you march on the Torai Palace now, you'll go down in a hail of bullets. They're ready for you. Lies. You may have lied to me, Sergey, but I'm not lying to you. We lied to you, Comrade Spy, because you crossed the line. You tried to take advantage of our friendship. Okay, but that's not the point anymore. The point is that I know your revolution is going to fail. <laughs> Come on, how can you know something like that? Because not even Lenin is backing it. As of this moment, all the top Bolsheviks are out trying to hold the people back, make them go home. Maybe the men at the top are scared. Maybe they're too frightened to grab the power while they've got the chance. But we're not. What about the Cossacks? What about all the Cossacks? The Cossacks have come out in favor of the government. There's snipers on the rooftops all along the main roads. How do we know you're telling the truth? Because I'm your friend. Indy, you work for a government that wants the revolution to fail. And we have thousands of people here who'll tip the balance between success and failure. You think we're going to hold them back on your word? Yes, on my word is your friend. Look, don't you see that I'm trying to help you? Don't do this! Indy, I'm sorry, but you're asking too much. Hello? Anybody there? Oh, Indy? I didn't think there was anybody here. I just came round because I found some meat. I was going to cook a stew and surprise everybody when they came back. Well, let's save yourself the trouble, Rosa. They're not coming back. Not coming? What do you mean? I mean that as we speak, they're leading a pointless march of thousands of people, right into an ambush by a regiment of Cossacks. We've got to warn them. I already did. They didn't believe me. Do you blame them? So what are you going to do? Do? There's nothing I can do. I offered them what I had. They said no thanks. Well, they're my friends, and I'm not going to let that happen. Hey, Rosa, wait for me! Machine guns. I cut them to pieces. Thank you. 